You know him from the Smiley Morning Show. Now, now he's got his own show. Radio Theology is on ZPL. Here's Pub Pastor Darren. It's that time again. It's time for Radio Theology in your eardrums, in your life, maybe on your Alexa. We're not going to judge where you listen. We're just glad you do. Pastor Darren here with Ryan and Lisa. And it is your weekly dose of faith, hope, love, and music. October 6, 2019. Guys, when's the last time your back went out? In a couple years. I've never had my back go out. Yeah, we'll oh. keep praying that direction, friend. Mm-hmm. Fine, I will. <laughs> Got a young back. I'm at LA Fitness trying to get a swole. Mm-hmm. Just trying to keep it real. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm just warming up the shoulders, guys. Just uh-huh. I'm just holding 10 pounds in each arm. Okay. Real easy. Just get the blood flowing in the mm-hmm. shoulders. Sure. Some forward uh, lateral, r- mm-hmm. lateral, yeah, lateral raises, raises yeah, kind yeah, of sure, thing. Sure, sure. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Then there's a, a clicking sound that happens on the left side of my back, mm. and I immediately feel like someone has electrocuted me, mm. as in the electric chair, uh. like death row. And I'm standing there. I can't breathe. I can't move. But I'm trying to not make an emergency scene in the middle of <laughs> LA Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most painful part. Yeah. You don't do embarrassed. No, I don't do embarrassed. You don't do embarrassed. And I had just had a conversation <laughs> with a friend about his back going out. And I was like, ah, oh, it's been a while since mine. I was doing pretty good. It's no problem. <laughs> so I'm I'm looking at this guy as I'm currently can't breathe in the middle of LA Fitness. Uh-huh. Like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it was... and did you flag him down, wave no. him over and say, hey, no. I went, no. friend. I went and set the weights I down. I need help. Uh-huh. Like w- waddled my way like a penguin mm. <laughs> over to a bench, <laughs> awkwardly kind of fell over into it. And then if I if I was at the right angle, kind of bent to my left, I could uh-huh. sort of breathe. And I'm trying to like play it cool, like no one knows that I'm currently being electrocuted in my back by spasms because uh-huh. I'm 86 years old. Wow, mm. it was terrible. I don't know why I fell down. It's just doing some warm ups, and <laughs> next thing I know, those good ten, breathe. Those ten pounders really got gotcha. you. <laughs> Radio Theology Weekly Dose of Faith, Hope, Love, oh, and Music. Man. Pastor in here with Ryan and Lisa. If you, I, I hope you're not feeling old today. It's October 6, 2019. That's right. Finally starting to cool off a little bit. It, the, the, the fall is maybe deciding to show oh, up. Yeah. So nice. 91 this week was a little aggressive. Yes. It was. It was aggressive. Yeah. But you know what? I don't want to I don't want to breeze past this. I want to revisit how old you feel. <laughs> I want to bring it back. We don't have with, to. Oh, literally bring it back. Yes. Yeah. With um, you don't look old. Well, you look I appreciate so it. young yeah. and, and, and fresh-faced. Not, not, not like so young, but just youngish. baby-faced. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just the smooth yeah, and it's, the... It's, uh, it's, uh, it's the vegetables. Yeah, really. <laughs> you know what? I, I what tell Josie that if she wants to have her hair long like Rapunzel, oh. she has to eat her vegetables. Yeah. So I oh. know that that's a lie. Right, yeah. yeah. Right. Vegetables, so, yeah. So give me something else. Give me something else that, uh, that, that's a lie. Uh, it's good soap. I've got good so- soft water. Oh, we have a soft oh, yeah. water Good. softener. Okay, mm-hmm. one more lie, and then you're gonna hit you me be, with the truth. You got to be careful okay. lifting those big bags, though. Now, dude. Yeah, yeah I got to be careful gotta... with that. It's just, uh, it's a lot of sleep. It you sleep mm. well, and it freezes oh. all of the muscles in your forehead. Really, it it freezes. Mm-hmm. The, the yeah, sleep you, freezes it, or yeah, the, the wrinkles. The Botox that you went and got does that? Does no. that? Oh. Does Wait, that take? Oh, it's time for some hit music here in Indy. My back may be broke. But Botox does keep my face looking so fresh. So fresh. Now wow. I feel so vain. Oh, no. I'm so vain, I probably think this next song's about me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, good timing, guys. Funny. Funny. <laughs> Back in tracks now. Good. good. Kind of a softball. I mean, you just kind of teed it up for us, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and how does it feel when you look in the mirror and know you spent lots of money just to inject the poison into your eyes? Yeah. You know, it, 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 it looks great. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on record, live on the air. Oh. I'm giving you two six months, six months, and I guarantee you, you're standing in line going, "I wouldn't mind looking younger." <laughs> and then we'll do a bit called something about you guys mm-hmm. eating your words. It's gonna be Crow Fest, mm. Crow Fest 2020. Mm-hmm. Okay, coming we'll up see. Soon. Should pastors get Botox? Coming up next. Nope. It's called Ryan <laughs> Eats Crow 2020. Coming up next on Radio Theology. Lisa Graft has a death wish. Oh, my. That's the headline <laughs> right here on Radio Theology, a weekly dose of faith, hope, love, and music. Uh, Pastor Darren here with Ryan and hopefully still Lisa. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know what you're going to do this week. <laughs> Two weeks ago, Ryan, Lisa, actually, no, last week, last Lisa week. almost died of margarita poisoning. Oh, yeah, that's right. She uh, got super bloated from all the sodium It intake. was sodium, you guys. Oh, sodium. So- death by sodium, almost. Mm-hmm. Via almost. margarita, though. Yes. Then- Ow. 
then that wasn't dangerous enough. Mm-hmm. Then last week, you decided, how about we rappel down a 17-story building? Ooh. Yeah. Actually, I think you guys decided that on my behalf, which was great. Now so thank it, you. Now it sounds familiar. Yes. It's all coming back. It's all coming back. <laughs> That's right. right. You went to Arizona, and we uh, at Pub Theology, we raised $1,000 to give to uh, City Life, Youth mm-hmm. for Christ, great charity on the west side of town. Yeah. And if we could raise 1000 <laughs> we could donate that, and that allowed you to rappel down a 17-story building. Yeah. How was it? Uh Ah, it was so scary. <laughs> yeah. It was so, so scary being at the top of the building. I mean, just the anticipation is enough to just absolutely kill you. But the wind was high up mm. at the top of the building. So then I'm like hardly standing, being blown over and thinking, oh, I'm just going to get off the edge of this yeah. and then just go down. I love mm. it when they were like, uh, ma'am, it's time to let, let go of the rope, ma'am. Go ahead. No, weren't you at one point hugging the security guy or the, the the rappel guy? I yes, I held hands with a man that I don't remember. Would not let go of his hand. Wow. But then there was a guy who was in charge of like stabilizing me and my rope and everything, and I was hugging him. And he's like, "Ma'am, it's it's time to let go now because you have to go off the side of the building." And I'm like, "Mike." Uh-uh, uh-uh, Mike. No, no, not me. And he's like, "Yeah, what you need to do is is let go of me." So I'm mm. like, "Okay, I'll let go of you." And I grabbed onto the pole. Yeah. And he's like, "No, you can't. You can't hold onto the pole either. Yeah. Like, you have to let go." Yeah. Disclaimer: That was the first time that Lisa's ever been on the pole in her life. <laughs> Radio theology, your weekly dose of faith, hope, love, and music here, Pastor Ryan and Lisa. And we got some pictures of you just about to go over the edge. You go to radiotheology.com this morning. We'll post yes. those. You can see Lisa trying to act like she's smiling as she's 17 stories in the air. Oh yeah. The bummer was we we were supposed to have. A GoPro video of yeah. you going down the whole time right. down the side of the building. It yes. it malfunctioned. Mm. It did, which is so sad because I thought we had it the whole time. Mm-hmm. So I'm and they prep you like you're talking to the camera, you're talking to your audience, and so I'm talking all the way down <laughs> to no to one, no one, which was so now embarrassing. But I stopped and I did Elisa's pieces and I I showed like everyone the view and all this stuff and. Nothing. No one. I got nothing. Was anyone in the office looking out, seeing you as you were coming down? Because it was the Barnes and Thornburg in, right, building in downtown, right downtown Indy. Right downtown on Meridian. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. So overall, I would highly recommend it to anyone. It's a great cause. Right? Great cause. Yeah. 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 Go ahead and you can do it next year. I won't be. Hey, listen. <laughs> it's amazing what we get into when we say yes to things. Yes. In mm. fact, today, not only are we celebrating that Lisa's still alive this week, which is positive, this is our three-year anniversary <laughs> Yay. of Radio Theology. Whoop, we whoop, did it. Whoop, whoop, yes, whoop. we did it. Good We've job. been here for three years. We appreciate you listening. Maybe this is your first time you listen to Pastor Darren, Ryan, and Lisa. We're here to give you a little faith, hope, love, and music every uh, every week of your life mm. on Sunday mornings on ZPO. And, and the interesting thing is, well, it's kind of crazy. It's not as crazy or dangerous as going down a building. Right. But for us to say yes, to, for us hosting this show three years ago, seemed like a pretty terrifying moment. But here's what I want to talk about. When we come back... There's some kind of dream that is just on the other side of a fearful yes for you. We want to encourage you when we come back to say yes, because you just might find your purpose in life on the next side of saying yes. Happy anniversary, baby. Got you on my mind. Oh, yes. Whose anniversary is it? Wait. It's ours. It's us. We did it. We did it. Welcome back to Radio Theology. Your week that was a faith, hope, love, music. Pastor Darren here with Ryan and Lisa. Guys, we've been doing the show for three years. Today's our our three-year anniversary. Wow. Can you believe that? I I can't. I can't believe they haven't fired us, A. (laughs) B, I can't believe it's actually been three years. And here's the reason. We don't really want to talk about the fact that's our anniversary. We're stoked. We're happy. We're having a big party this morning in here in studio. But the point is this. The, the way that we got a chance to do this show, because I'm a local pastor. Ryan, you used to sing in Straight No Chaser, mm-hmm. touring the world singing acapella music. Yep. Then you were doing youth ministry with, with Young Life here in town. Yeah. Lisa, you work for a you work for a, a college. Yeah. You've done some radio in the past, but like we weren't in radio. No. Right? We weren't even like doing radio. I was doing some smile this the Smiley Morning Show every once in a while with Dave, doing therapy Thursdays, but it's like we weren't a morning show. No. Right. ZPL came to us and said, hey, would you guys be interested in hosting your own show? And when when JR, the program director, asked me that, somehow, you ever you ever say yes before you realize you said yes? 100%. Yes, yep, I've done totally. that. Totally. That's what happened. I literally prayed about it for about a nanosecond. He's like, <laughs> have you ever thought about hosting your own show? Yes. Yes. We'll do it. And I'm like, what did 
we just say mm-hmm. yes to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. But I can look back on it and the whole story of how we came together to find a team, the way that God's been using this show. Hopefully it's the way it's encouraging you. All of that is on the backside of us actually having, maybe it's the courage or stupidity. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's both. It's yes. both. <laughs> <laughs> to say yes. Yeah. And I just wonder what's going on in your life right now that you're you're afraid to take a step. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's school. Maybe it's a relationship. I don't know what it could be, but you need to say yes to something, but you're too scared right now, so you're waiting. This is Radio Theology Week, the dose of faith, hope, love, and music. Pastor in here with Ryan and Lisa. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, how powerful is yes in our life? It's super powerful. And I think I just think back to the times that I've said like the the yes before I thought it through. Um, and one of those times was when I said yes to running the Chicago Marathon. Yeah. And I said yes because my boss asked me, and I said yes out of fear of disappointing and embarrassing him. Yeah. But then mm-hmm. like God use that to change my whole life. Mm. Like now I'm now I'm still a runner and and that's how I create mm. space for God and all of this stuff, but I would not have even known that had I not said yes. And guess what? The fear never goes away. Yeah. It, just, it grows. Yeah, we don't wait. Flows. We don't wait for the fear to go away. We have to become courageous. And I think that's a part of what 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 happens when we say yes, right? Yeah, I mean, I remember when you Darren came to me and just said, "Hey, I got this kind of crazy opportunity from ZPL to host my own show. Do you want to be be my wingman?" I was like, "Yeah, let's roll." Because at that point, I had known you for well over a decade, yeah. and 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 I was like, "This sounds amazing. Like they're yeah. just going to throw us microphones to talk to <laughs> our fellow Hoosiers uh, about Jesus." It's yeah. like, let's do it. And then I I think I remember the conversation conversation that we had saying hey we we need a third leg of this triangle here yes uh and you, you were like well do you know any women who are believers who know the radio and can do this and i said well i wasn't even thinking of this but my wife's best friend lisa is all that and we hit her up and there you are like literally like the whole team assembled in a day yeah right i think what what, what we see is that and this is something i really believe is that when we begin saying yes and, and stepping out in faith into opportunities we begin to realize that god is for us not against us right we say every week on the show he's for us not against us and he's actually created us on purpose and for a purpose and you're never going to step into god's purpose for your life if you're constantly saying no to opportunities that god's bringing into your life Who's ready for some fall? Maybe a little Oktoberfest. Huh? I am. I am. Autumn is here. Check the weather, guys. The next three days, like 66, 68, 69. Mm. Give it to oh, me. Oh, yeah. Give it to me. Pretty soon, leaves are going to start changing. Mm. Mm. Jeans and a sweatshirt weather is my favorite. Yes, come on. I'm mm-hmm. tired of sweating. I, I'm really done with the sweating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's been overboard. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm drawing a line. It's no sweat October for me. <laughs> Radio Theology here, your weekly dose of faith, hope, love, and music. Pastor Darren here with Ryan and Lisa. And it is uh, October. And uh, we want to give you maybe some October-esque things to do and uh, maybe a little community calendar time. Ryan, what's going on here in Indy as far as Oktoberfest? Stuff? Well, on Saturday, October 12th this week, it's the annual celebration of German American Day Oh, uh, down at the Athenaeum there at the Raskeller. Uh, on Michigan Street downtown in Indianapolis. It's a, uh, they've got a 5K leader hose and run walk. Nice. They're going to have a wiener dog race. Of course. They're going to have face painting and bounce houses for the kids. Aww. Everything German. And beers and pretzels for the moms and dads. I bet there is. Yeah. And now, listen, we've got something going on, Lisa, this Thursday. We want to see you guys at. Oh, yeah. We're going to have Pub Theology, which is Indy's best party with a purpose, from 7 to 10 at Wolfie's on Geist. The magician John Mobley is going to be there rocking the house uh fools and fables the band is going to be live uh rocking the tunes and then we've decided to make it a little bit october festy okay. of a theme and we will be in costume yeah so if you've got some lederhosen or german attire yeah, we're gonna it. break it, it on, on out, out there. yeah safe german attire not like world war ii era <laughs> german attire if you know what that i mean get real dicey yeah, yeah you said not. german attire <laughs> You're listening to Radio Theology, your weekly dose of faith, hope, love, and music. Pastor in here with Ryan and Lisa talking about Oktoberfest festivities, and we uh, we got a call. Hans, welcome back to Radio Theology. Oh, guten tag, friends. How are you doing? Wonderful. Are you stoked for Oktoberfest? Oh, my gosh. We've been celebrating already for so long. I'm so excited. We're glad you called because we thought maybe you could give us some uh, maybe do's and don'ts of celebrating Oktoberfest. Oh, you want to do's and don'tsies? Hit it. Oh, you got it. Okay, numero ein. Please wear lederhosen. Do not, though, look like an idiot. <laughs> Don't come in wearing the bunny ears or dressed up like the village people. <laughs> Just don't do it. Respect our culture. I like it. Okay? Yes. Number two, drink some German beer. It's okay. the best beer in the world. 
Do not barf everywhere like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. That's bad. This is not a frat party at Beta Zeta. Oops, I puked. <laughs> <laughs> Numero zwei. Make some friends. We're really nice people. I believe it. Yeah, but do not get in a fight, Lisa. Okay, I'll try not to. Do not punch your beer wench. <laughs> oh, my God. Be very respectful. Okay. There's a beer wench guild, a union over here in Germany that they take care of their people, so we take care of them too. I like it. I like it. Also, lastly, you can enjoy the local culture. There's lots to do over here in Germany. Okay. You could go to Neuschwanstein Castle. Have you ever heard of that, the Cinderella Castle? Oh, no. I, well, I, sort of, but not really. It sounds awesome, though. Oh, yes. But please do not remind us of World War II. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Just that's, avoid that at all costs. Yeah, that's, you got it. that's sound advice, Hans. <laughs> yeah, we're not really happy about how that played out. <laughs> But come on over. We'll see you at Oktoberfest. Oh, Hans, thanks for calling. Thanks for listening. We really appreciate it, man. I'll be saying. So if you can't make it to uh, Germany, go check out ratskeller.com. It has information about the Indie German Fest. Or come see us Thursday night at Pub Theology up at Wolfie's. We'll all be dressed up in our lederhosen. It should be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> information about that is at radiotheology.com. I just need some peace and quiet. Mm. Can I get an amen, ladies? Amen. It's time for Lisa's Pieces here on Radio Theology. We're your weekly dose of faith, hope, love, and music. And every week, Lisa, you bring us some pieces that just bring us some peace for our souls. Let's jump in. It's time for Lisa's Pieces. You guys. So last week, I um, I was laying in bed, and it was early on Saturday morning, and the kids were coming in, and they're swatting at me, and I'm like, ah, ah, ah. And I'm starting to throw myself a pity party in my mind okay. because my husband was leaving that morning for an overnight bachelor party. Ooh. So I'm like, that sounds fun. Sounds fun for him. Oh. Right? And then I'm like, oh gosh, these kids. Man, they woke me up so early. And then I'm going to be with them all day. And I'm like, oh, and I hate when I don't wake up before them because da 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 da. And so I'm telling myself this horrible story in my head, okay. throwing a pity party for one. And it was great. And then I realized I have an hour where my husband's still home, and I can do whatever I want to. And so I am training for this half marathon coming up in November. And so I headed out the door on a run. And I had six miles that I had to do, which I wasn't going to do because I was having a really good time in my pity party bed. But instead, I decided, you know what, let's go. And so on the run, I got all the peace and quiet I needed. And then I realized I had to create that for myself. Like, so nobody else is going to give you peace and quiet. So this is kind of like a tough love. I'm going to come at you with love and grace. But I realized for myself, is my five-year-old going to come up to me and say, Mom, you know what I think you really need? Here's a cup of coffee. Why don't you just go sit on the porch for a little while? Most five-year-olds do that, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. And maybe my two-year-old would come up and just, Mom. That's, well, that's really all he knows how to Aww. say. But he, he would say it in the cutest voice. Yeah. But no, they're not doing that. And even my husband, I'm not telling him how much I need a break and the thought of spending all day with my kids. I know that makes me sound like a horrible mother, but I'm like, what the heck am I going to do with the kids all day long? So I just freaked out and I left <laughs> on a run. And I feel fine about that because it helped me realize that I had to create my own quiet. Radio Theology, Weekly Dose of Faith, Hope, Love, and Music. Pastor here with Ryan and Lisa. And Lisa literally hijacked and stole peace and quiet from her chaotic life. Ladies, I know you need this. We probably all need this. But I agree, Lisa. You can't wait for people to create it for you. Sometimes you got to hijack some peace and quiet. Right, exactly. I realize it's it's my job to, to create it for myself. And I can't tell you what that looks like for you. And I'm not going to sit behind this microphone and, and pretend to know all of the reasons why your life is really hard and all of the circumstances. I know I'm talking to a lot of different people in a lot of different places, but no one is going to hand you a little bit of peace and quiet. No one's going to make you set down your phone and just take a few deep breaths. Like no one's going to make you turn the radio off in your car and use that as a time to reset your heart and your mind. Do that after 10 o'clock. Yeah, though. keep after the radio course. on yeah, yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, yes. It. I mean, right. you wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> no. and, I mean, and even if after you get a couple minutes of peace and quiet, you can listen to our podcast, Radio Theology. <laughs> Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. That's right. But all to say, like, no one's going to force you to do that. But if you can figure out, like, even if it's you put the kid in the car seat and you take an extra slow walk around the car before you get in the driver's side, that could count as a whole vacation, mm. you know? So it just <laughs> depends on how you use it. Uh, so my encouragement is you figure out teeny tiny slivers of time where you can create your quiet. And then when you are in the moment of quiet, 
please, please try to listen for the very small, still voice of your Heavenly Father just telling you, gosh, I love you and I'm with you. I love it. I love it. Every time Lisa's Priest is bringing you some peace for your soul. If you need some more of that, go over to IamMotherOfTheYear.com. And Lisa's got tons of that and thousands of women all over the nation connecting. Go check it out at IamMotherOfTheYear.com. Every week we read stories, and the only three words we can say are, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Welcome back to Radio Theology. Uh, your weekly dose of faith, hope, love, and music. Pastor Darren here with Ryan and Lisa. And guys, this first story, this it, this is not even a Lord have mercy. This is, Lord, what it, what has happened to us as human beings, <laughs> mm. and will you please forgive us and save us all? I really mean it. This yes. is a full-blown prayer request, okay. and it starts in Spain. A woman evidently uh, came to her neighbor, okay. said, hey, neighbor, I could use some help. All right. Got a box I need you to store for a little bit because the police are coming to raid my home. What, what was in the box? Well, I don't know why she knew. How did she know that the right. police were coming, the raid? I don't, she says, I've got some embarrassing toys uh-huh. that I would like you to I'll let you fill in, the, fill in the blanks with your imagination oh. I've got some embarrassing toys in this box I don't want the police to find them sure. you would be embarrassed by these toys okay <laughs> upon transport the, the neighbor box is uh, vibrating sir <laughs> <laughs> picks up a very very terrible smell coming from the box uh, okay. curiosity takes over opens the box oh, alright no. where she finds no. oh gosh no yep no. a rotting human head no! what yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Evidently, it was the head of the woman's uh, partner. What? No Former longer attached partner. to her body. <laughs> Ay, Dios mio. Wow. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. This wow. is everything about this story from Gosh. start to finish. Needs more than we can say today, but oh. we're going to just go with, with a real solid. Well, literally, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lisa, lighten the gosh. mood for us a touch. Oh, wow. my gosh. So we're going to Nebraska where okay. this 19-year-old girl got dumped. Oh, So sad. she's sitting in her apartment wondering, what am I going to do with these love letters? Mm. When she realizes this amazing phenomenon that we women call the boyfriend bonfire. She lit her boyfriend on fire? No, no, no. Oh, oh. That Gosh. did that not lighten the load. Impressive. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that would have been that would have been perfect with the first story. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, good. No, she lit the love letters from her boyfriend on uh, fire. Okay, that's a close one. Exactly, but I, you guys know about the boyfriend bonfire? I've never uh, heard of this. No, I have no idea. Probably because about. you've been boyfriends and you're not usually invited to the boyfriend bonfire. Yeah, we probably yeah. caused it to you, but, yeah. but go ahead, fill, fill yes, in the gaps. Yes, exactly. Here. So basically, you so you take the love letters and, and the cute teddy bear that he gave you and all the things, and you yeah. you put them in a pile and you light them on fire. And it's Good this, lord! You what sometimes is, invite your friends over and you have this big is, see you later boyfriend is, bonfire. Is it women? Is it supposed it's, to be cathartic? Because it just to sounds be stupid. Okay, so did she do this in the backyard or what? She she decided I'm gonna lay on the floor in my apartment and I'm going to just use a butane torch and just slowly put these love letters out of their misery. Wow. And then she was so exhausted she fell asleep and when she woke up apartment's on fire. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. I, oh, I, it's hard to believe why she's single. You guys. Yeah, I was going to say, when she realized that her house was on fire and she was still single, I'm sure she said to herself, <laughs> Lord, 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 Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Ryan, take us home. Your life is on fire, lady. <laughs> Guys, we're going to Washington, D.C. Okay. Uh, have you ever seen those security cams on like someone's front door or whatever? Oh, yeah, like the, the ring footage? doorbell right, or whatever. Right, right. Yeah. Well, uh, one neighborhood uh, posted in an online forum for neighbors. It was like, hey, has anyone seen this uh, mountain lion or cougar that's creeping around our neighborhood Ooh, lately? Oh, my Scary. gosh. Totally. Yeah, this thing was huge. Okay. okay. Uh, one, one woman, uh, after careful examination of said photo, uh, sheepishly chimed in the forum and said, uh, I think that's just my cat, Cookie. Oh, <laughs> Cookie apparently likes to wander around at night, and Cookie is, uh, how do I say this, morbidly obese. Oh, Got boy, it. Cookie. Yeah, Got and it. Cookie's vet chimed in and was like, yeah, it's the fattest cat we've ever seen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Poor Cookie. I know. He's just chomping on some uh, some bits and treats over there. <laughs> Kibbles and bits. That's what I, that's what I meant. Yeah. Some bits and treats. Some bits and treats. And some cookies. Yeah. Cookie better mix in a little bit more uh, exercise mm-hmm. or... Uh, <laughs> Could be the end of the road for him, in which we would all have to say, you know what, Cookie? Lord Lord have have mercy. mercy. Tell me about aggressive forgiveness. Hmm. Interesting thought, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Aggressive forgiveness. Radio Theology, your weekly dose of faith, hope, love, and music. Pastor Darren here with Ryan and Lisa. And guys, I saw a news story. Maybe you read it this week. Um, There was a a story that happened a couple months ago where a a white female police officer uh, getting off of a double shift of work accidentally came into the wrong apartment of a, a single black man and thinking she was in her own apartment, 
pulls out her service revolver, shoots him dead. Okay. Tragic, tragic accident. Horrible. Lots of questions. How does this even happen? How do you get to your wrong apartment? I'm not, we're not going to get into all the details mm-hmm. of that. We can't figure that part out. Sure. Right. This week, she was sentenced, uh, charged with murder, sentenced to 10 years in jail. Wow. And I don't know if you guys saw the story, but at her sentencing, the younger brother of the man that was murdered yes. uh, actually came and embraced her, uh, told her that he forgave her, uh, and, and just some really beautiful uh, words that he shared with her. Uh, do, we have, do you have what he said, Ryan? Yeah, he said, I love you just like anyone else, and I'm not going to hope you rot and die. I personally want the best for you. I wasn't even going to say this in front of my family. I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you because I know that's exactly what my brother Botham would want for you. Give your life to Christ. I think giving your life to Christ is the best thing my brother Botham would want for you. Wow. That's powerful. As I read that, I thought, as a Christian pastor, if someone killed my brother, I don't know that I would have that aggressive of forgiveness in my life to extend towards somebody. Right. For and sure. then in the video, he he asked the judge, he says, I don't even know if this is allowed, but can I hug her? And the judge allows it. And I mean, there are like, there are some real sobs that are happening. Like, yeah. like soul level emotion oh, for sure. that's going on in the well, video. The thing that bothered me is I, I saw some Facebook comments from people saying basically like, like this is, you know, this is just another situation of racism where you're, we're, we're forgiving a white person for, for killing a black person. And, and my, I think this kind of supersedes a, a racism conversation where this is a family, white, black, green, br- whatever. This is a family who has lost a loved one. Yeah. But what they're choosing is that they're choosing the power of aggressive forgiveness mm-hmm. because they don't want this to be something that ruins. They're already heartbroken, but they understand that bitterness will begin to ruin their soul. Right. And so they have chosen aggressive forgiveness because of what it means for them. It doesn't let this woman off the hook. Right. She still murdered someone. She's going to go to jail for 10 years. And guess who probably beats themselves up and hates themselves more than anybody in this story? Right, her. Yeah. This police officer. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember in 2006, there was a there was an Amish school that a, a lot of people were killed at by a, a lone gunman. Do you guys remember hearing this? I don't. Okay, so this is what caught my attention in that story, what, 13 years ago, was that the Amish community, the parents of these people, I mean, who lost their children, go and instead of doing a press conference with like attorneys on their sides and any of that or pointing fingers or bl- going to social media, whatever, they went and forgave the gunman's family. As a community, they said, this is what we're going to do. Because like you said, Darren, we know that if we stay in this position of unforgiveness, yeah. it's only going to be toxic to us. And so this, I mean, it's a very powerful video if, if you can watch it uh, online. I mean, it's an amazing moment where you really do see the gospel played out real time. It doesn't mean that she's not going to go to jail. Right. It just means that she's going to go with more of an understanding of I have been let go of this guilt internally yeah. from this person's family. I think what we need as a world right now is to embrace the power of aggressive forgiveness. I think we've bought into the myth that the powerful thing for me to do is to hold on to an offense. Mm. Yeah. But when we do that, all we do is hurt ourselves and in turn hurt our world. Um, so I love the story. It's inspiring me to take a, a better look at where I can forgive we hope this morning that it inspires you as well. Here on Radio Theology, your weekly dose of faith, hope, love, and music. Should Demi Lovato have to apologize for getting baptized in the Jordan River and other pressing ridiculous questions that we ask in our culture? It's Radio Theology, your weekly dose of faith, hope, love, and music. Pastor Darren here with Ryan and Lisa. And uh, Ryan, we were just talking about before the break here, uh, t- this week on Instagram, we got another pop star uh, making some spiritual strides. We've yeah. talked about Kanye. We've talked about the Biebs. Florida Georgia Line. Now we got Demi Lovato yeah. getting baptized in the Jordan River. That's right. Yeah, so she got the opportunity to go over to Israel and get baptized in the Jordan River, the same place Jesus was. She said on Instagram, this trip has been so important for my well-being, my heart, and my soul. I'm grateful for the memories made and the opportunity to be able to fill the God-sized hole in my heart. Thank you for having me, Israel. But evidently, she's catching a lot of flack because people are getting offended on Instagram for her trying to grow spiritually. It's so stupid because that's what we talked about before in this last thing about like, let's just, everybody has a reason to get offended. No, she should, I'm going to answer your question. No, she should not have to apologize for taking a trip. Would any of you, if Carnival Cruise Line came and said, hey, if you post a couple, we'll give you a free cruise. You went, Come on. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And I know there's political things and all this stupid stuff tied up to this, but anybody in her position would have done that. And the fact that then she felt led to get baptized in the same river that Jesus got baptized? Come on, people. 
Yeah. yeah, I don't know why we just can't. Why we feel no one can root for anyone else. Like you can't root for somebody. Like, hey, good for you. I'm happy for you that you're making spiritual strides. Right. She's been fighting drug addiction, all these different things. Right. And now she's like. I'm trying to make strides spiritually in my life. This was great. And she shares it. We shared it actually this week on RadioTheology.com, her post. And, and I don't know why we, right now in our culture, we look for every reason to try to be offended by everything we possibly can be. Radio Theology, your weekly dose of faith, hope, love, and music. Pastor, you're here with Ryan and Lisa. And I'm just, I, I feel bad that Demi Lovato came back out and apologized. If yeah. I offended anyone because I got baptized. Here's what I want to say, Demi. How about this? I don't care if you were offended by the fact that I got baptized. I got baptized. Right. I wanted to do this. Yeah. This is my spiritual life. Yeah. If you, if you're offended by it, well, have a Coke and a smile and enjoy your offense. (laughs) Yeah. That's on you. It wasn't about you. Yeah. This wasn't about you. I was making a decision to make connections with God. If that's not okay with you, I didn't ask for your permission to get baptized in the first place. Right. Right. So cry me a river. How about the Jordan River? I'm getting baptized. (laughs) Like, deal with it. Yeah. I'm not making a political statement. I'm not talking about Palestine. I wanted to respond to something that I felt was going to bring me spiritual health. If you can't handle that, that's on you. Right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and get offended. Go ahead and get offended. But I'm not going to apologize for it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Because I'm not. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm on a soapbox this morning. No, yeah, I love it's it. good. I love Fired Man. Up Darren. I kinda, I, yeah, Feisty Pastor Darren's kind of one of my favorite uh-huh, uh, favorite uh-huh. little things that we do here. What else uh, can we just, say that w- stokes you? Yeah. Yeah. We're not just going to walk around and you know wipe everybody's mouth with a bib when they can't handle what you do in your life. Right. If you get offended by what something everybody else does, guess who's the weak person in the relationship? You, you. are. Mm. Your, your ability to get easily offended doesn't make you strong. It makes you weak. The strength, the strength in life comes from forgiveness. We just talked about that in the last break. Forgiveness is the greatest strength that you can actually possess and actually extend. Offense, an and easy offense, yeah. means that you're weak and you need to take some time and realize what is happening in me that allows me to not actually find joy when other people are making strides in their own life. Right. That's your journey, not theirs. Yes, and let me just tell you, if you're offended by anything we said, Cry me a river. <laughs> and then I bet this is this topic is going to make our Behind the Mic podcast episode, which yeah. is going to be released uh, on Wednesday this week. So make sure you're listening to Radio Theology. Make sure you're following RadioTheology.com so you don't miss that. All right. Off my soapbox. Back to more pop music. It's the thought of the day with Pastor Darren. Red light. Green light. Red light. You're out. You're out of the game. You guys remember that? I mean, I'm obviously not talking about your driving conditions this morning, but I am bringing your memory back to that great elementary school game you played called Red Light, Green Light. You remember it, right? You all got in the line, and the goal was to cross the other line where the other person, the leader, was standing out there calling out Red Light or Green Light. And if you kept running after you heard Red Light, you were out of the game. Oh, man, what a great childhood memory. Only probably to be surpassed by that fun game called Red Rover, Red Rover. Remember that one where you clasped arm with your classmate and you use those clasped arms to basically be a clothesline and nearly decapitate your friends? Well, let's hear it for old school PE games this morning. But getting back to red light, green light, I thought about that this week and realized that when we stopped playing that game in PE, I think many of us kept playing it with God. Or at least we we think he's still playing it with us, especially as it applies to our pursuit of our life's purpose or God's will for our life. I know that you have tons of dreams and plans and desires for your future. You've got hopes and dreams and, and you're wondering, is God good enough or nice enough, loving enough to give you the green light to pursue your purpose in your life? Or is he so mean and vindictive that he's just waiting for you to take one too many missteps so he can scream out red light and kick you out of his will for your life? Well, if you feel this way about God, guess what? You're not alone. Tons of us do, or at least we have. But here's what it changed it for me. As I begin to read the scriptures and get to know God's character more and more, I begin to realize that God is actually a green light God. Now, there are some red light issues out there. I mean, like, let's not murder people. How about we don't, you know, commit adultery with our neighbor? Let's not lie to each other. These are some red light issues. But predominantly, when it has to do with actually pursuing dreams and ideas that God's placed in your heart, he is a green light God. Over and over again in the scriptures, God says things like this, therefore, go. 
Most everything connected to following Jesus has to do with forward momentum. He is a green light God. So I don't know what you've been thinking about. I don't know what you've been dreaming about. But if you come to a place in your life where you say, God, your will be done. I want to follow you. And you still have something in your heart that is stirring passion and purpose within you. I want you to be encouraged this morning that God is giving you the green light to take your next step to pursue that dream. Red light, green light was a lot of fun in elementary school, but it's not fun when you're grown up trying to figure out God's will for your life. God loves you. He's for you, not against you. He's created you on purpose and for purpose, and he is a green light God. So it's time to get moving. And if you need some help to jumpstart that movement, I want you to head over to IamBornToBe.com this morning and get the five-day jumpstart to purpose. It's a five-day devotional that I'll send you every morning this week that will help you begin moving towards God's purpose in your life. Just head over to IamBornToBe.com this morning and get moving. You've got the green light. This is Pastor Darren Earlywine, and that has been your Radio Theology Thought of the Day. You have the green light! To come to Pub Theology on oh, Thursday. Wow. See what I did there? I, I love it. Classic. I'm a radio professional. I don't know if you know. Well done. Nice. <laughs> when, when can they join us Thursday, Lisa? Thursday night from 7 to 10 at Wolfie's at Geist. And you can get all of the info online at radiotheology.com. And if you have some Oktoberfest gear, maybe some German-like apparel, put it on. Put it on. We're going to be in some. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to put on my leader hose on that night. <laughs> You're literally going to wear a leader leader hose. We bought you on Amazon. I know it's yeah. going to be my first leader hose and experience. Anyway, hey, we love hanging out with you every single uh, day. We've we've loved hanging out with you for three years here on Woo! Radio Theology. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and never forget, God's made you on purpose and for a purpose. He's for you, not against you, and He's near you, not far away from you. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you next week right here on Radio Theology.